Hey guys, welcome back to ADSR and FM8Tutorials.com. Make sure you get yourself subscribed if you're not already to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. So I'm going to start a little kind of like a mini series. Um, it's about the effects in FM8. So I have a pretty simple sound made up, uh, just like a kind of a saw sound. <laughs> So then I'm, I'm playing that live, so there's probably going to be mistakes, but bear with me. So I'm going to open up FM8, and let's just go to, because we're focusing on the effects, let's go to the effects section. So this sounds dry right now. So it's a pretty good sound to work with, and that's something that you, could, you should always be kind of aware of, is drenching a bad sound in effects doesn't make you have a good sound. If you have a good sound dry, then the effects are just going to make it sound that much better. So in the effects tab, which is right here, you have all these effects to choose. And the thing with FM8 is it doesn't have the best effects that, that I've ever heard in a synth. Um, Massive has, you know, a couple better, the reverbs are a little bit better. Um, the delay is a little bit easier to, le to use, but that being said, it, you can get some really good results using FM8, and you might not be asking, well, why don't you just use the effects like that you get in your DAW or whatever, and you can, you absolutely can, but uh, it saves processing power most of the time, and also, sometimes when you're designing a sound, you, you part of the process is just using the internal effects, and I personally kind of make a sound, put effects on it in the synth, and then add extra effects if I need, but as a whole, if, if you if you can get away with using the the effects and the synths, then why not? So first one is overdrive. Um, we can go over that. That's basically uh, if you think of like a guitar amp, it's just adding some harmonic distortion to it. And it's, this one's really simple, but you can get some good effects. So so you, you'll notice right when it turns on that. It muffles the sound. That's because the tone and the bass are set at 50. So with a lead sound, like that's closer in its harmonic content to what the uh, original dry sound was. And to my ear, it almost sounds like it's adding a little bit of, of a white noise, almost like a bright noise and massive, which is nice. Um, and then, so for lead sounds, you're you're, you're going to want to have your you're going to want to have your tone up. Because um, you can hear, you know, it takes away the the edge and the brightness. It's going to help cut through your mix drive. That tells you know tells it how much of that distortion there is. And bass is obviously just adding and taking away bass. So that one's pretty simple and straightforward. And you can use that. That's great for bass presets and lead presets that you're trying to make a little bit bigger. And when I'm using the effects in FM8, I'm kind of thinking, how can I make the sound bigger? Um, because the effects as a whole kind of they, they can be hard to dial in but with this for instance this lead I'd probably keep the volume around around 50 so I'm not lo losing a lot of dynamics and I'd actually keep the, the drive pretty low I'd keep the bass where it's at so here's here is it with the effects on and then with the overdrive off So it didn't affect the sound a whole lot, but it, it definitely added to it. So moving on, um, we'll come back to that. Uh, I'm not going to do all these in order. I'm, I think this is just going to be a two-part video, not three-part. We can get through it in two, probably. Um, another really good one, let's start with the reverbs, the, the psych delay, and the chorus slash delay, because those, those are ones that you're going to use a lot. So with with the reverb, when you click on it, you have... You have four controls. You have time, bright, treble, and dry and wet. So the time, it, it, the, the, the one reason why some of the effects in FM8 are a little confusing is they use different terminology, and I don't know what I, they, they could have pulled that from like an old FM synthesizer. But um, the time is basically like you know the the length of if you're like using a conv if if you're in a convolution reverb, it's it's the you know the decay and the length and the room size or you know any of those standard controls um so here's how it is with just it on default so the time obviously if you crank that up the delay the sorry the the reverb holds out longer hear that there it's off so bright 
that doesn't actually affect the the dry of the sound the dry signal coming through it just affects the time that's kind of what they're grouped so you'll hear it see how the, the tail's kind of bright sounding so I mean and you can get different good you can get different effects with that you can kind of make spring reverbs and and you know big hall reverbs so now the treble the treble attack I, I hear it, it, it affecting the tail end of the actual dry sound as well as um, the, the decay of the reverb So playing with bright and treble can help you get a reverb that will cut through your mix. Dry and wet is pretty self-explanatory. It's how much you know of the signal you have coming through of either dry or wet. So I mean that's a pretty good reverb for uh, a lead sound. Okay, so moving on. Um, Let's go, let's open the uh, psych delay. So I'm gonna turn the dry wet just off on the reverb and leave it up so we can kind of make like a full patch of a kind of like a template. So the psych delay is actually, the reason it's called psych is it's reminiscent to a, uh, like what's called a psychedelic delay with guitar processing. So uh, Native Instruments has a plugin as well called uh, Guitar Rig. It's a guitar presser, processor, and they have a psychedelic delay. It's like for 70s and 60s delay and stuff. People like Jimi Hendrix and all those guys used it. And that's why I like this delay a lot because it has a reverse function, and you can get some really cool sounds out of that. And so let's just go through all the controls real quick. So time... Um, So when you turn it down to zero, there's basically no delay. And then if you turn it up just a little bit, you can get like a slap delay going on. If you turn it up to four, it's a little too much, but anywhere between like two and three. You can actually, and then if you click sync, what that's obviously going to do is it's going to sync to the tempo of your FM8 or your DAW or your host, whatever you're using. So see how on two, it, it has a, it's making it thicker. It has, that's what's called a slap delay. Um, stereo just spreads the stereo field. You hear that? So you can get some really nice results with just slightly tweaking this. And that's kind of the theme with, with the FM8's effects is if you, if you turn the knobs up too high with like the, dry wet and you know all that it, it becomes too much and you kind of lose your initial sound but this for instance is a pretty I, I could actually see myself using this this preset and I like that because you can't tell in, unless I turn this on and off I a b it for you that, that I have an effect on so You can hear that difference. It's pretty. It's pretty apparent, and that's basically just putting a slap delay on it. Now let's turn up that dry wet on the reverb we had. So you can see how. I mean, you can get some pretty quick, good results with. So I'm going to turn the uh, reverb back off, and we can still mess around with the psych delay. So tap function, that's so you can tap out your, your tempo if you so need to. So reverse, let's, let's play with that. So I really like when I use this kind of a slap delay, which is, again, the time between 1 and 3. Um, sync it and have the feedback no more than I'd say around 3. And all that does is it makes your sound thicker. But when you put the the reverse on, what it's doing is it's just reversing your feedback of the delayed signal. And on this kind of a slap delay, it's a pretty cool effect. Uh, it's a pretty good effect for thickening it up. And then stereo, same thing with the... You know, just spreads your stereo field. Detune, one of the coolest features of, I think, 
I think of the psych delay is you can actually, you know, detune. So if you have a big saw sound and you detune it, you can actually make it even bigger, which is really nice. So um, and then pitch, you can, you know, change the pitch. Of, change the pitch of just the wet signal, which is really cool. So if you turn the dry down, you don't hear any of the pitch. If you turn it up, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it exclusively, the pitch. So you have that down low. And you see, you hear that octave because I turned it up to 12. So now we have that feedback delay adding an octave of sound. We're not even using an oscillator, or, I mean, sorry, an operator. We're in FM synthesis. Um, so you, 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 your sound's getting bigger. So you can, you can uh, kind of hear that. I don't have it up too loud, so here, I'll turn it on. Here, it, this is with it on. And off. So you can hear how, how much bigger that sound's getting. So now I'll turn up the, the reverb just a little bit, and we'll have, we'll have both effects. So uh, let's turn down the reverb one more time and let's actually get into the delay and have a longer delay so turn the pitch back down so that right there like if you play anything when you turn up the time and the feedback all the way it's a lot um, you're not gonna really be able to use that a whole lot so you can do, you can get really cool functions. I mean, you can get really cool results with the reverse function. Hear that? So holding out like pa on pads, this is, this is like a dream. So you can see how that would work really well on, and if you turn the feedback down just a little bit and turn the stereo up, you, you can get some really, really thick pad sounds. So you, yeah, you can see how, how a sound that had less attack, because this synth sound has a really short attack. But let's turn up the reverb and, you know. So that's that's what I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go over those three for today. The overdrive, which is what we went through, so we can turn that on. And we'll have all three because when when you turn it off, you think it takes it away, and you're like, oh no! I t it, but it, when you bring it back up, it brings up the last settings that you use. So right now we just have overdrive, uh, we have we have reverb and the psych delay with the reverse. So we're just gonna play this. <laughs> So now if I turn all those off and play something similar, if I can remember what I played, we have the difference. So you can hear that you can get some really good results with FM8's uh, onboard effects. They're a little weird to use, no, not weird, just a little different than some other other soft synths out there, but you can still get really good results. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. And if you're, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, Sign up for that because we put out, we pump out videos every week. And then check out our site, fm8tutorials.com. There's a lot of great in-depth tutorials on there on a bunch of different topics. And there's even, you know, some sounds and all that stuff. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day.